All right guys, so before we jump into it, I have to say that this video is going to be about season two of The Handmaid's Tale. It is a drama on Hulu. If you have a desire to watch The Handmaid's Tale and you haven't gotten around to finishing season two, it's time for you to go. That's my disclaimer. The Handmaid's Tale is my favorite show on television right now, or I guess it's not exactly on television. It's my favorite TV show. This show is exceptional. Artistically speaking, the cinematography is beautiful. The writing always has me on the edge of my seat and the acting is so freaking great. Elizabeth Moss is the protagonist. Her name is June slash Alfred. Elizabeth Moss is also a Scientologist, which we can talk about that in the comments. Anyways, the fact of the matter is I'm obsessed with this show. Now I know a lot of people, particularly black women, have a problem with the fact that this show is so white. It is a very white show, but I'm going to be honest. I don't really care. Now I had a little tinge of guilt season one because there are lots of parallels to the plight of enslaved women. I got over it because I just think the show is good and I also think it's doing something different. Now, people of color, black people do come in and out of the show. June slash Alfred's husband is black. Her best friend is black. There are some really actually impactful cameos by actors of color and black folks throughout season one and season two. But yeah, this is a very white show. It's based on a book published by Margaret Atwood in 1985. I'm gonna be honest with you, I've never read it. This show is about a fundamentalist Christian nation called Gilead. It took over most of the United States in a violent war. Um, women are subjugated, they're not allowed to read and write, and yeah, it's basically about women's misery. I decided to binge watch the entire first season over a weekend, which I do not recommend, and I was more than ready for season two to premiere a couple of months ago. I'm obsessed with it. So what really drew me in is not just that this is a beautiful show. In the era of peak TV, there are lots of gorgeous shows that I am never gonna watch. But I love the fact that this gorgeous show was saying so much about our contemporary political climate. But you know, back to the racial aspect of this show, there is a lot of emphasis on like, oh my God, what if we treated women as servants and breeders? Like, what would that look like? And you know, as a black woman, you gotta be like, oh, I think we know, you know, we know. And Atwood has been really open about the fact that a lot of the horrors that we see depicted in the show are gleaned from real life stuff that happens across the globe. So from what I've heard, because you know, I ain't read the book, season one aligned very closely with what the book outlined. And I love season one, but for me, season two was so exceptional with regard to what they were trying to tell us. This is where the social commentary became so pointed and poignant. So it's still a white woman's nightmare. Clearly June is enslaved. She is forced to carry her master's baby. The most important thing that the writers did this season was to hold a mirror up to Serena Joy, the woman who literally embodies ideal white womanhood and say, look at what you did. So when the season started, I could feel where they were trying to take us with Serena Joy and I bristled because I was just like, girl, if you think I'm really going to empathize with the slave mistress, you're out of your mind. And what I loved about this show is that they didn't go too far in pushing Serena Joy as a sympathetic character on us because that is not gonna work. What it did do for us is elucidate what the stakes are for Serena Joy. So let's dig into Serena Joy Waterford as white feminism in 2018. So we learned in season one that Serena Joy used to be a far right activist.
Yes. Now season two is really a deep dive of Serena's misery and it is delightful. Serena was instrumental in selling a woman's place in Gilead, literally. She wrote a book called A Woman's Place. The tagline is, never mistake a woman's meekness for weakness. Now, Serena Joy is undoubtedly an ideological foremother of Gilead, but she messed up when she thought that she would be able to advocate for returning women back to the home and then have a seat at the table with the other men who become commanders of Gilead and have her voice be respected on an equal plane. They won't let you speak. I'm sorry. It is what it is. Thank you for trying. I won't give up trying. You should be a part of these decisions. I'm going to keep telling them that. No, don't. We need to work together now, not argue amongst ourselves. I'm going to see you at home. Now, despite being sidelined, in season one, Serena continues to be a public advocate for Gilead as this idyllic nation. Never mistake a woman's meekness for weakness. Clever. Yes, it is. It's from a woman's place. My wife's book. I reread it on the plane. Such a thoughtful argument for um, domestic feminism as it was called thank you that's very kind i heard you speak once at a rally before the war you were very passionate women were abandoning their families and we needed to make a change we were running out of time you were arrested for inciting to riot if i recall i had a temper in those days back then did you ever imagine a society like this? A society that has reduced its carbon emissions by 78% in three years? A society in which women can no longer read your book. Or anything else. No. I didn't. God asks for sacrifices, Mrs. Castillo. That has always been his way, but he gives the righteous blessings in return, and I think that it's safe to say Gilead has been blessed in so many ways. But in season two, she's forced to grapple with the fact that now she has no rights. And here's where we get to the meat of the feminist argument. A lot of women think that patriarchy is invested in your protection. That's not true. Mm -mm, nope. You can't consent to defer to men, to being objectified by men by being placed on a pedestal and think that you're going to be able to hop down off that pedestal anytime you want and be treated as an equal. That's not how it works. And that's why the happiest we ever see Serena Joy is when her husband becomes incapacitated. Then she gets to step in and take back some of that power that she lost when Gilead came into existence. In another life, maybe we could have been colleagues. And in this one, we're heretics. I was already on the naughty list. An adulteress, a fallen woman, as Aunt Lydia used to say. But this is new territory for Serena, I think. How does she feel about falling? She seems pretty fucking happy. Do you miss working? a small sacrifice to make to be welcomed back into God's grace. I do truly detest knitting. To be frank. You're really a good writer. Thank you. She got to read and write and make decisions with Alfred's help. It was like a little Christian fundamentalist nine to five. Those episodes where Fred is gone is the freest that we have ever seen women in Gilead. But freedom has dire consequences in this world because just as power seeks more power, 
Freedom seeks more freedom. And that's why when Fred Waterford comes back, his top priority is restoring order. And chastisement isn't enough. Serena Joy has to be broken. It was unfair for me to burden you with so much responsibility. Now we must make amends. Amends? Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. And ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. Giving honor unto the wife onto the weaker vessel. Fred, please. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Now, even after we see her being abused, that is not enough to put me on Serena Joy's side because as a wise woman once said, See, when you do clownery, the clown comes back to bite. And it doesn't help that every time we see Serena open up a little bit, every time that peak of humanity begins to shine through, something happens, she snaps, and she reverts right back to that domination mode. No, no, you are a married woman of faith. The handmaid will do it. Thank you. Now you try. Don't you want to run a household of your own one day? And that's the thing about living in a society where there is so much violence. Violence becomes the primary way for humans to relate to each other. And I loved how this season emphasizes how violence corrodes interpersonal relationships. When we look back at the early days of Fred and Serena's marriage, or the earlier days, we see that they seemed like a really happy and healthy married couple. They were passionate, they had sex, they listened to each other, they supported one another. You know, Fred seemed to genuinely engage with Serena's ideas and be an advocate for her. That is gone. Now we have Fred reading the Bible and beating his wife. And something I really appreciate about the racial politics of this show is, yeah, it is a white show, white show. But I like to see visualized white women being cruel to other white women. It really demonstrates for us how quickly and willingly white women will throw other white women away to maintain their social status. Ain't no racial solidarity here. Now after all of that, I saw exactly where the writers were going and I was all in. 
Serena Joy is suffering in a hell of her own making. I really started to see a little bit of light for her in the finale. Serena starts really thinking about what world her baby is going to grow up in. I know we have so much to look forward to with our beautiful girls. Yes, we do. Do you worry about that? About what? Their future. I put my faith in Gilead. Praise be. I suppose all mothers worry. Of course we do. We want to give our children the best life they can have. A life with purpose. That is the dream, of course. For all the children of Gilead. Boys and girls. Yes. Do you think the other women share our concerns? Yes, she had some misgivings before, but now baby Nicole is here and she's looking around like, shit. And this is where we have to have a little feminist decide. If your political education is not right, then you think that all feminism is about is women being wild and crazy and being naked if we want and going to work if we want. It's all about me, 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 what do I wanna do? But an equally important part of feminism is the work of world building. What type of world do you wanna leave to the generations that come next? After you do the work of imagining, then you have to do the work of building. How are we going to get there? And Serena's little feminist awakening is about what type of world am I leaving for my daughter? And that's when we see the shift. And now, not only is Serena internally challenging Gilead's order, not only is she doing it within the walls of her own home, but now she's making that fight public. How can we help you? Our covenant allows those in good standing to come forward with amendments to be considered by the council. We would like to propose such an amendment. We? As faithful servants, it is our duty to ensure that the children of Gilead live by the laws of Scripture. The Holy Scripture is a miracle. It is a gift given by Him to all of humanity. We believe that our sons and daughters should be taught to read it. That is a Radical proposal, Mrs. Waterford. Offered with the deepest respect and the love that I have for my daughter and for all the daughters in Gilead. Thank you. We will certainly discuss the issue seriously. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness. And we know 
there are gonna be huge consequences. Now this is where I really started to feel something different about Serena. Feminist work fundamentally is about what are you willing to do? What are you gonna sacrifice? Serena literally got up in front of this male body with these women who abandoned her, broke the law, and sacrificed not only her public reputation, but her pinky, which was shown on the show, but will not be shown here because hell no. I did it to set an example for our daughter. So you have. Now, based on her reaction to being dragged away, it feels like she thought she was gonna get out of that punishment somehow, like Fred was gonna come in and save her. <laughs> nope, that didn't happen. And that's why I really liked the writing of season two, because it was a great allegory for where we are in this political moment with some of those domestic feminists. Hell, some of the intersectional feminists. We think that that boomerang is not gonna come right back around for us. And if you think that you're gonna be able to sit on the sidelines and watch other people be maimed and demeaned and raped and killed while you get away scot-free, you're wrong. That's, that's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Season two of Handmaid's Tale, literally from the first scene was, it was a lot. I really, really enjoyed it. If you liked it or if you didn't like it, let's talk about all of that in the comments below this is gonna be another long video thanks for sticking with me okay guys thank you so much for watching be sure to like share and subscribe if you like this content and want to help us make more of it sign up to become a patron on our patreon there's tons of exclusive content there content that will not be posted anywhere else as well as merch and reading lists love to hang out with y'all there and talk it's a great time or make a one-time donation links for both of those things are below join us for events across the country black girls gather is always an amazing time i'm also going to be doing some readings of new unpublished work across the country if you'd like to hear about those dates in advance sign up for the email list that's all i have you guys thanks again for rocking with me another long video see you next time